Hey, what's going on, people? This is Zero the Tenchi, and today we're talking X Men Days of Future Past. Now, I recently saw the third trailer, and I'm already amped up to see the movie, regardless of what some fans are saying, you know, about it. Like, oh, um, Storm's car, Storm's part's getting cut. It's the Wolverine show all over again, and and freaking uh, what's his name, Quicksilver, it looks like. You know, just don't like his look, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I understand that. He does look like he stepped out of the the Spy Kids universe. But, you know, when I can, for, I, I can forgive that as long as his character is still the same. You know what I'm saying? You can't keep changing around characters. I know this is what they do in Hollywood, but at the same time, you got to keep the integrity of these characters and why we love them so much intact. Now, the reason why Hugh Jackman is front and center in this is obvious, because they're making money. This strategy was working for them, even with the fail that was um, X-Men Origins Wolverine, even though I do admit it did have its merits, it was still, you know, it was still a eh, movie to me, um, but the fact that this is based on one of the probably one of the most recognized arcs in comics Days of Future Past from the 1980s where Kitty Pride, aka Shadowcat was the one that was you know that was sent back to warn the X-Men and help them and blah 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 this time it's Wolverine front and center but with that in mind it reminds me a lot of Wolverine and the X-Men the series from 2009 and uh, this really was one of my favorite, um, my favorite X-Men series. Not because Wolverine is front and center, but it shows you what would happen or what could happen if someone who knows he should not be leader, who knows, you know, who knows he's not cut out for it, has to step up and be the person to bring his friends, his family, back together and basically one of his closest friends who at this point in this particular in this particular series is in a coma because it's Professor X who's actually in the future in one timeline because it keeps going back and forth. In the present, the Institute the Charles Xavier Institute for Gifted for Gifted Students ends up exploding, and we're trying to figure out why. All through this series, all through this series, it just one day it just goes, you know, and Charles is at the is has gone missing. They find him in Genova. That's where uh, Magneto has built his safe haven for you know for uh, for mutants and. Um, which and which will cause Senator Kelly and his um and his uh which which will call it MRDs as they're as they're called. Um they you know, his basically his mutant police force are, you know, basically, you know, trying to shut the mutants down, trying to get them to sign a uh, you know, trying to trying to get them to sign a uh a, a contract of some sort, basically registering them and their powers, whoever's a mutant, blah blah blah. And it, it, it's 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 just crazy. And who 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 we got in this? We got Gambit in this, even though he's a thief in this particular timeline. He's still you know he's still a thief. He's not with the X Men. He has no ties to them whatsoever. He does have a um an interesting um story with Wolverine, and then later on you don't see him again until probably the middle of the of the season. We also see um we also see another one of of Magneto's kids, Polaris, who seems very timid and very quiet, but basically, what do they say about the quiet one? Don't mess with them. And that's all I'm going to say for anybody who hasn't seen this series. Um, you got Storm in this, you got uh, Colossus in this, you got uh, um, Shadowcat in this, you got Iceman in this. Just a, f you know, just a few people. You do see some of the other, uh, you know, some of the other mutants, but they all have uh, cameos, and of course you gotta have Mystique, you gotta have Sabretooth, everybody, but everything comes together. There's even a adult fight between uh, between Wolverine and um, <clears throat> and the Hulk, basically, uh, basically going from where the original story when Wolverine was first introduced, fighting the Hulk, left off. You know, so, and, and plus he got Cyclops pissed off and mad at the world because Jean's also missing. 
So really, those were just some important plot points taken from this. With you know, but it was heavily inspired by the Days of Future Past original storyline. So I definitely, I would definitely recommend. If anybody is a X Men fan or is just curious about, um, you know, about the Days of Future Past storyline, definitely track that story down and definitely check this out. And also, also check out the um, Wolverine and the X Men comic series. Now, I have not read it myself. I've just heard from very good sources that it is good. And that's all I got to say for today. <laughs> um, if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel, please. I do videos every week about pretty much, you know, you know, whatever. <laughs> and uh, I hope that this movie is a good one. I'm crossing my fingers. I'm crossing my fingers, really. Let me know in the comments below what you think of anything that I have talked about in this video tonight, and uh, I will catch you on the next one. Peace, love, and never be normal.